we're going to look at a group of organisms that are called slime molds. These are all fungal-like protists, and they come down into one of two groups. They are either cellular slime molds or they're plasmodial slime molds. If you've ever seen these, you've probably seen the plasmodial type, whereas the cellular slime molds are quite small. Cellular slime molds like this one start out as a group of spores coming out of a sporangium and you can see the sporangium in the left hand photograph up at the top and the spores come out and they germinate and they're all like these little single celled creatures and they go and they feed and as they feed they increase in size and as they increase in size they divide and they increase in number and then all of a sudden we get a lot of them and at some point there is a chemical signal that is sent out that pulls them all together and they aggregate into a plasmodium that they often call a slug and then each one of these individual spores works together to form this long elongate sporangium. When we look at these, these are not very large in size so this whole thing is maybe a eighth to a quarter of an inch in height, no more than about a centimeter and they aren't very big and so when you look at these two photographs which are actually quite marvelous you can see what the slime mold looks like. These slime molds are being studied because we basically have a very rudimentary type organism that is able to communicate between cells. And when we've got com cellular communication like that, we need to study that, figure out how that actually goes on. These are called cellular slime molds. The other group are plasmodial slime molds, and they start out life as these tiny spores. The spores are then released out, they germinate, and as they germinate, they start growing into a plasmodium. And here you can see a yellow colored plasmodium on this piece of wood. There are a couple of different types of fungi near it, but they have nothing to do with this particular organism. The plasmodium turns into this mass where it seems to just grow and it looks like it's a multicellular creature, but it's really not. It is a single celled organism and it will continue to expand out from there and they will just get bigger and bigger. This is one, this is about six inches across and this was on the ground and you can see how it's kind of crusty at this point. Here's another one. We watched this one for an hour or so as it moved along and this one was about 10 inches in length. That would be about 25 centimeters in length. So it was a fairly good size. At some point during their life cycle, they will go and they will start to produce sporangia. And the sporangia are basically where they reproduce from. And the sporangia come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. This is on grass. And you can see the sporangia here. Some of the ones over on the left-hand side, you can actually see how they're coming up on little stalks and they're little round things. This is a different picture of the same sort of material on grass and you can see that these are a little bit different colored they might be more immature but they are still rather interesting in format and you can see how they're covering all the grass now you might look at it and say that's damaging the grass but all it's doing is it's using the grass in order to gain support so that it can go through its reproductive phase the grass suffers no ill from this and these spores that are going to be released from it and each one of these little sporangia has lots and lots of spores in it the spores are going to start growing and they are going to consume things like bacteria and organic matter this is a very interesting one these are actually about an inch and a half in length it looks like a really bad hairdo or something they almost look like pipe cleaners and they are extremely large and they are just filled with spores. This one was found on a piece of wood. If you look down on the base of it, you can see how it's got a central stalk that runs through this all the way up. We took one of these, we pulled it out, we put it on a microscope slide, and then we photographed it. And you can see this is a Photoshop of one, two, three, four, five different photographs of it under the microscope because it was just too big and you can see the central stalk running through the center of it and then what we call the capillicium which is the 
kind of lacy network where the spores are produced. And these would have had lots and lots of spores on the inside of it. But by the time we got in here to do this, the spores had basically fallen off. These are plasmodial slime molds because they start out with a plasmodium and later in life, the entire plasmodium, which is single celled, will turn into sporangia and produce a new next generation. When we look at these, these are a very interesting group. Again, we said they are fungal-like proteists. They are, for the most part, unicellular, but they can get to be quite large and quite interesting. 